I'm sure most people here have heard or seen the phrase wanderlust, whether it be hashtag at the end of some post or overlaid on some beautiful scenic background or scrawled across someone's t-shirt. No matter where you've seen it, you probably know that the word has strong sentiments attached to it. For those of you who don't know the word, it's German and it means a strong desire to travel, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Wanderlust evokes feelings of freedom and daring and bravery and a desire to just go no matter where. I think the word breaks down into two parts though, both associated with curiosity, but drastically different. The lust part of the word points towards the desire to travel, to do more, to see more. The wander part points towards the ability to appreciate the adventure for what it is, an adventure, not because you need to get somewhere. Over time, I think society has forgotten how to connect with the wander part of the word, and I think this is due, at least in part, to the way we're brought up. From a young age, we're taught to be involved and curious. We're meant to be active learners. Their very phrase attests to the occasion to the extent that activity is associated with learning. Schools like ours, this is a norm, and teachers do their very best to encourage that curiosity in us. But we need to learn to wander, to not question these things. In school, Curiosity is something that's so encouraged. There are posters plastered on walls, special moments in class when you're supposed to ask questions, expectations and standards. School teaches us to be enlightened, interested, and intelligent individuals. But the way that it teaches us actually over-prepares us for the rest of our lives. We are a generation entering the world armed with ever-ready devices. We have the ability to learn how in a heartbeat the power to learn why with the flick of a finger. And we're more curious than ever. No longer are we propelled by an internal drive to know more or by our own insatiable appetite for discovery. We are now trained with curiosity. School has carefully spoon-fed us all the ingredients necessary to make us an army of curious individuals. Imagine the creativity, the innovation, we're the upcoming tech geniuses, the producers, the creators, the writers, the problem solvers, all because we are curious. And during our time at school, this curiosity really isn't a problem. In fact, our questions are met with the approving nods of teachers and the polite interest of our classmates. But the trouble is, school is supposed to prepare us for life as a whole. And this curiosity often doesn't copy over to the less complicated parts of our lives. In school, it's all about gaining insight and delving deeper. Has an English class ever stopped and thought that perhaps the author didn't mean that the butterfly's wings were a larger metaphor for the character's metamorphosis and life as a whole? Could the butterfly just be a butterfly? Perhaps in school it is necessary to analyze the text and dig deeper and gain insight. But outside of school, that same book should be appreciated as a piece of literature beautiful on its own. And this is true of math and science as well. We feel the need to know why these methods are this way or how this theorem was discovered. But in not in questioning everything, we lose the ability to accept a fact or explanation for what it is. We end up questioning everything when we really shouldn't. We question the ripples in a pond or the expression on someone's face. Trouble is, these things don't actually have any explanation to offer us. Certainly nature doesn't. Sure, you can analyze the amplitude and the frequency of the waves and that ripple, but that's not going to help you better appreciate its beauty. You may try to gain greater understanding of an expression on someone's face, but it's not the kind of meaning that you can figure out through interrogation. Some things just aren't meant to be dissected. You might not be able to figure out the meaning to a ripple, but you can appreciate its beauty. You might not be able to figure out the deeper meaning to someone's expression, but you can appreciate the fact that you were there to glimpse it. As students, this frustrates us, but accepting these seemingly complex things as they are can teach us the simplicity of just living. Every once in a while, we need to pause and smile. Not pause to question, but pause to enjoy to just soak up the moment and wander. We leave school and our default setting is still to ask, ask questions. 
We can't help ourselves, but we are subconsciously curious. But we have to know that curiosity is a choice, not a default. We need to know when to stop, when to take a step back and say, you know what? I don't need to know that. And we'll often end up happier for it. Because happiness doesn't come from questioning everything. It comes from wholly accepting your surroundings the way they are. And we need to understand that. Because curiosity has the profound ability to spoil moments that could easily be enjoyed. What good is a conversation when you look up the answer on Google because you just have to know? What good is nature when you're too restless to enjoy it? Whether it's a bird pooping on your head or a missed bus or terrible weather, these are things that we're missing out on because we're questioning them. When we're angry and we're rushing to that class or that meeting and we know we're going to be late and we drop our books and we, you know, we trip on the way there, we're frustrated, we're annoyed, we want to blame someone. We start asking questions. We say, why me? Why now? And in doing that, we miss out on an opportunity to actually revel in our misfortune. Or when we see something beautiful, like a flower, with those delicate little drops of rain balanced on the petals, the last thing we should do is spoil it with something like, what's that flower doing in the middle of the sidewalk? We should admire it in awe, not question its existence. Or when we're traveling, the last thing we should do is butcher our surroundings with questions. You can be a surgeon at school. At school, you're meant to dissect things and dig deeper and search for more. But outside of that, disemboweling the intricacies of your surroundings isn't going to help you better appreciate them. In fact, it only serves to cloud the beauty of what you're seeing. There is so much in life that there simply will not be a logical answer to. I'm not telling you to not be curious, period. Curiosity is important. It's just overemphasized. We need to know when to relegate the restlessness that comes from curiosity to its place. The laboratory, school, politics, technological development. We need to know when to be curious and when not to be. And I leave that decision ultimately up to you. We need to understand that sometimes questioning things makes them lose their realness, their vibrancy, when we hack them apart with questions. We need to know when to wander because wandering will preserve that beauty. Wandering will provide us a calm and happiness that lusting for answers just won't. We go into the world searching for answers and explanations in everything, simply because we don't know any better. We need to understand when to stop, when to stop questioning. Whether it be the ripples in a pond, the expression on someone's face, or a beautiful scenic background, we need to appreciate these things as they are, without asking why. We need to appreciate their beauty and not question it. Wanderlust points towards the two ways that we can enjoy the adventure that is our lives. We can lust for more, for the changes that we think will better us. Or we could wander. We are taught so well how to be curious in school, how to lust for more, but we're never taught how to wander. We need to know that that's an option. We need to know that we can accept the comings and goings of life with a smile and a shrug. To not worry about the fears and uncertainties that lie in front of us. To welcome the things that we can't change with open arms. Savoring the beauty of our world, no questions asked. Thank you.